Hello, today I'm going to show you how I constructed my automatic fish food feeder for my aquaponics system. This fish food feeder allows me to dispense food using my timer program that I show you in an, another video. The main part of this is the actuator. This is a 12 volt automatic door lock actuator. You can get this at an auto parts store or a um, place that sells alarms for cars. It comes with the brackets, these metal brackets, the push rod. The, the things you do need to buy will be the springs, the screws, some kind of end cap here, and the PVC. You will need a piece of two inch PVC, and then for the main part is a four inch to two inch reducer, and then a two inch uh, screw cap adapter. To be able to install this properly, you will have to remove on the 4 inch to 2 inch reducer the little lip that's on one side. It's a stop. And you'll just take that out either by sanding it with a Dremel or uh, cutting it out with a, some kind of knife or something. Here's the actual assembly of the parts, the way they'll go together. The push rod goes through the end of the actuator and then you'll install the brackets. Now the brackets are, I pre-bent these to fit on the end of the two inch PVC, which later I'll show you, you have to heat this up to get the shape that allows this to slide into it, into the PVC to hold it properly. And you just use a heat gun to heat that up. And this will allow you to slide the actuator into the two inch piece of PVC and hold it in position. The next thing you'll do is you'll put these, the stop and then the two springs and the springs are what's going to reset this when the power is taken off of this. So you're only going to need power to open it and then the springs, as soon as the power is removed, the springs will automatically reset this to closed position. Before installing this actuator into the PVC tubing, you'll need to run a piece of wire through the hole, through the top of the reducer, and feed your wires as you, as you install this. You'll have to feed your wires up through the center of the PVC, the two inch PVC, and out the hole that you drill in the top here. And this will be your connections for your actuator. Once you get the wires up through the hole and started, before you can push the actuator all the way up to the top, you will need to heat this with a, a heat gun. And this will allow the PVC to turn soft and will allow you to push the actuator up near the top. The end of the actuator should be recessed about an inch into the two inch PVC. The next thing we're going to do is install the springs. Now we line up a, the hole here that will screw through one of the mounting points of the actuator. And on one side, before we start the screw in, we'll put one spring. And then as the screw goes through to the other side, we'll attach the other spring. So the springs will be on either side of the actuator inside. It's a little difficult for you to see this. I'll have a light on it and you'll be able to see how I connect these. Okay, here's the mounting screw. It'll go all the way through and it goes through the mounting support of the actuator and then on either side of it, the springs are attached and the screw goes through each spring. Then the springs will come out the end. The first bracket will be on first and then the stop and then the springs go over the end of the push rod the springs will be on either side of the bracket. So once you put these springs on here, you'll make sure that one is on one side of the bracket and one is on the other side. I'm going to switch them here, you'll see. Just take the bracket and slide it over. So now you see the, the springs are on either side. This helps pull the plunger back evenly. Now the other part here that's going to keep this from moving around is the second bracket which is bent longer and that's going to give you your the ability for this push rod to 
to pull in a straight line. If you didn't have this, it would pull crooked, it'd pull offset. Okay, use a couple of short screws to mount this into the side of the PVC. And I'll use a total of four, two on each side. Again, this will keep this bracket in a straight and true line. Okay, the main part of this is done. Uh, this is what I was telling you. Once you build this part, you could really put this in any container. And um, the way this works is you can put a plunger or a door or whatever on the end of this push rod and it can open and close. And I'm showing you the position of the way it comes through the actuator. You'll see the push rod is straight in a straight line with the holes that I drill in these end pieces. Here's the wire that'll be my connections. And then on the end here, I just cut a little piece of PVC and then I cut a little sort of door in the side. And that way, I, when I pour the food in, it'll pour in and come out the side of this into the container. This piece also acts as a cover for the actuator to keep food from getting inside and jamming the, the actuator mechanism. The next part of this is going to be putting on the stopper. This is actually a piece that I got for a wine stopper that I cut and made work here. You could use a, the other idea would be to use some kind of ball, something that's round, allows the food to, uh, to come out of the end of whatever container you're using. Again, if you use a different container, you use a different size stopper. I used a Coke bottle for mine and I used a four inch coupling on the end and that fit perfectly over the end of the coke bottle and allowed me to slide this in. I don't glue this piece in, that way I can remove it if I need to. And this piece slid into the end and I cut the push rod to make sure that this fit perfectly. Whatever you use for the stopper, you need to drill a hole in that's a little bit smaller or exactly the same size as the push, push rod. And what I do is I deform the push rod just a little bit, that way when I bang on the end and, and get the the stopper to fit on there. It fits on there super tight. Okay, this is how I fill up the fish feeder. I just pour it right into the end here and I painted this bottle just to make it look not like a coke bottle so much and then I left the very bottom clear that way I can see when I need to refill the fish feed Okay, after I finish filling it up, it's time to install it. And I just screw on this two inch cap that I have with a piece of wire going through it. And it allows me to spin the cap back on and mount the unit. This is my timer software that I use. And I set one feeding in the morning at 5.30 for one second. And also in the evening at 5.30 for one second. It's very important with this uh, actuator not to operate it longer than a, maybe two seconds max or you'll burn up the motor. So then it's set on auto and it's all ready to go. And here it is operating.